Hello. Hello, all of YouTube land. My name is Wildboy5699. Welcome back to another video. I am back home actually early from Comic Con. Um, the main reason why, because the weather was extremely cold up there. And it is actually 11 o'clock on the 14th. They actually just started the Comic Con 10 minutes ago as I'm um, recording links. But I had to come home early because it's up in Northwest Arkansas in, Fay in Fayetteville Rogers area. And I live in the Fort Smith area. And there's supposed to be a huge snowstorm. It's supposed to hit about noon, 1 o'clock, both here and up in Northwest Arkansas. So my parents, we talked about it and said we're going to just go play it safe. And we want you to come home. I said, yeah, that's fine. I pretty much Comic Con spend out. I did get my money's worth. I didn't meet people I want. And I felt like if I would have stayed... Uh, today, if I would have go, gone today, then I probably would have been done by, by 1 o'clock, but, and I would be ready to come on, but actually, I did get my money's worth. I went to this trip with $675 exactly, and now I got $120 to my name for the, for the next two weeks, but, like I said, I got my money's worth, like, I, you, you'll see in the vlog when I upload it either later tonight or early tomorrow, I just gotta edit, I, re I recorded it all on my phone, so I'm either gonna try to get it to my, in my computer, or upload them privately and then download them and edit them all that again. I'll just have to figure out which one's better and all that. So, but I wanted to talk about what I got at Comic Con, who I met at Comic Con, and the experience in general. Because last year I had such an amazing time last year, and this year was just about as fun. So I only got to meet two people uh, this year, and that was Marty Grabstein, who plays Courage the Cowardly, Courage the Cowardly Dog, and I got to meet Bra Paulson, who plays Whack. Uh, Yakko and Animaniacs, Pinky and the Brain, Carl Weezer, uh, Ninja Turtles and everything, and I thought that was, that was cool. So, when the doors opened, I got there about, we left here about 8 o'clock, actually was, we actually left here about 7.30, then we went to eat Cracker Barrel, and then we finally got on the road, because Cracker Barrel was right off the interstate when you go to Fayetteville, and it was, and we got, I got there about 9.30, and the doors opened about 10 o'clock, and I just rushed, and I said, well, let's go to Marty Grabstein's booth right now. And when I walked around the corner, I saw his booth. He was just right there getting everything set up. I'm like, holy crap, that's Cursed Carly Dog right there. So I'm like, just go play cool, get right there in line. And I was actually the very first person in line that um, he met, that he met. And it's funny because they told us to come up. I'm just, you know, being cooperative and walking in the, the path where it does. And he's laughing and speaking as courage. He's like, y'all are so cooperative as courage. And I thought that was really funny. And so I did meet, like I said, I did meet um, Courage. I did buy an autograph, which you see right here. I got this. And it says, to Colton, much love from Courage and autograph. Marty grabs and he wrote, ah, right there. And he was actually the very first person to do the Q&A for the trip. And I thought, okay, so I'm going to go to his booth right now. When the doors open, and then I'm going to go to Rob Paulson's booth, and then I'm going to go to the Q&A. But I waited in Rob Paulson's line for about, till about 10.40, 10.45, and he hasn't shown me because I figured they think they sit, they sit about 11 o'clock, they're going to come to their booths. I said, all right, well, I'm going to go over and get a good spot at Marty Grouchy's Q&A because that was free. And I um, was right there in the front row. And, man, Marty Grouchy is just, just a really likable guy and so very, very cool. And I was talking to a fam uh, to a, uh, a family. Well, it was uh, I think it was a guy and her his uh, a girlfriend or wife, and then there were two kids who was really young. And so I told him, you know, if you gotta go, go to if you're here, go to his booth. It's gonna be very awesome, very nice guy. And he was the very first Q and A, and I was actually the first, um, not the first, the second person to ask his Q and A, uh, ask him a question. But I told him right off the bat, cause like, like if you watch my videos, I've kind of had a, a little bit of a rough week, you know, uh, you know, my depression kicked in, you know, anxiety and just a lot of personal stuff. I'm like, I'm just having a very rough week. And I told Marty then, you know, I struggle with depression and having autism on top of it hasn't helped a lot. But I told him I watched Courage the Kelly Dog from start to finish this week. And I just thanked him for, you know, doing what he did and everything. And uh, he said, that was brave of me. And he asked everybody for a round, uh, to give me a round of applause. And everybody clapped for me. But I thought that was very cool. So if I find that video somewhere, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or anything, I will post that little video right then and there. I will find that some way, somehow. But and then I pretty much asked him, how did he, what was the audition process for Courage? And then he explained, you know, it was like 1995. He talked to somebody. He, he got a phone call from somebody he hasn't spoken to in, I think, about five or six years. And then, you know, we talked about the creator of Courage Kelly Dog, John Dilworth, and doing auditions and everything. And I think, uh, you know, other people 
ask them some questions, you know, like what's their favorite episode, favorite moment, how did you were able to do the screaming and everything. And I remember la I remember before I went to sit down and I said, by the way, your courage laugh is everything. And he just smiled and said, thanks. That was very, that was hilarious. Cause, honestly, because I like, every time courage laughs, it just cracks me, especially when he gets injured, when he gets hurt or injured, it just cracks me up. So, and I think... There was not many people there, but they asked uh, the guys, like, hey, do you guys have any more questions? I said, I have one more question. He's like, yeah, go for it. And I told him that, you know, um, you know, I've heard many good things about Thea White, how she's actually, you know, like Mary Ols, may, her, may she rest in peace. And I asked him, was uh, Lionel Wilson and Arthur Anderson who played Eustace? And uh, Lionel Wilson was the first person to play Eustace, and I think he left the show halfway because he got sick. And I think he, he said, Marty said he died right before the show came to an end. And then he was replaced by Arthur Anderson, who died in 2016. So a little bit, a couple, of, like 15 years after the show ended. And so I asked Marty, you know, was Lionel Wilson and Arthur Anderson anything like Eustace, or were they complete? He said they were nowhere near as mean as Eustace. And you know, he said he met Arthur Anderson a handful of times. He said he said he was a nice guy, but he said that Lionel Wilson, the original voice actor of Eustace, was a very kind of sweet man. He would love to come to these comic cons and meet people and everything. And I'm like, yeah, I can probably see that. Because, you know, I've always read where, you know, these actors play mean-spirited, awful people, but yet their actors are the, probably the nicest people you ever met. And I felt like that would have been, they probably, if he would have, how he explained Lionel Wilson, I felt like he was one of those people he played Eustace very well and Eustace as a mean-spirited, grumpy character. But yet he was played, from what I've heard, he's played by a sweet old man. So that's very cool. And then after that, I went to Rob Paulson's booth, and it, it took an hour um, to get to finally meet him. But I actually um, did get an autograph from Rob Paulson as well, as Yakko. You can tell it's a little bit smudged, but that's okay. And he goes, hello, Colton, which is very cool. And he goes, Yakko, and he got an autograph from... He played the original Raphael in the 1987 anime series and Donatello in the Nickelodeon version. Um, and I pretty much told him the same thing I told Marty as Q&A, but I wanted to tell him personally because his uh, he had stage 3 throat cancer a couple years back, and I think he said he beat cancer not that long ago, and he wrote a book called Finding Voices, which you can find on Amazon. And I read the book on I read the book online, and I told him, you know, that book really wanted me to tell you how much, I wanted to tell him how much, you know, like I said, I was having a rough week, you know, having depression, autism on top of it doesn't help, and I just told him that, you know, he's a from all the amazing things I've heard and seen that he's done, I just wanted to thank you. Thank you. And, you know, he explained, you know, uh, having stage 3 throat cancer was hard, but he was actually, you know, he's always pleased to hear how much, you know, these cartoon characters and characters from TV shows and movies can make such an impact on people's life. And there's a couple, good couple of characters that mean so much to me. And, you know, he's like, oh, well, thank, and thank, you know, at the end, he's like, thank you so much for sharing. That made my entire week, and what you know, that, that just really means a lot. And, I've heard many people say Rob Paulson is the nicest person you met. I can for sure doubt that Rob Paulson was a very, very kind guy. So, and then I got a picture with him, which I, I, I posted on my community tab uh, yesterday. But like I said, I never, it was very cool, very nice. You know, I went, he didn't have a solo Q&A, but because the four original Ninja Turtles in the 1980s, I think Barry Gordon, Ken Clark, Townsend Coleman, and Rob Paulson were there. And I think like only seven people got their question answered at the Q&A because it was like four of them and each of them had to an answer. So... Well, that was very cool. I went to that Q&A, but I didn't ask any of them a question. I just went for Rob Paulson, obviously. But and then, what else did I do? I walked around a little bit more, bought some stuff, which you'll see in a minute. Then I went to check in at my hotel room about 4 o'clock. And then I went back to the convention because I had the wristband. And they said, yeah, if you have the wristband on, you want to go check in your hotel, you can come back with no problem, which I did. And then I walked around for a little bit and bought some other stuff. Uh, I was going to go meet Eric Stewart from Pokemon. And then, because they, they haven't announced his um, autographs and prizes yet. But when I, until he got there, it was like $60 for an autograph or $40 for a picture of a $100 combo. I said, yeah, I'm going to pass. So, and then and then after that, I just walked around some more. I was going to go get another autograph from Otter Grabstein from Courage to Kelly Dog. Because he had the uh, Straight Out of Nowhere Scooby-Doo meet Courage to Kelly Dog movie. And I was going to get that some, but it was $60. I said, oh, but I don't have that much anymore. So, no thank you. So, but... And then I, I think about 5.30ish, 5.15, 5.30, I finally went back to my hotel for the night. Because I'm like, yeah, I got my money's worth and everything. And then I went to the hotel, and then I went to the bar, uh, you know, got a drink. No, not an alcoholic drink, of course, but I wanted to sit at the bar because I never sat at a bar before and ate dinner. And so I ordered a $17 burger and fries, which was really, really good. And, of course, a lot of other celebrities when the content starts showing up, you know, I think I was, uh, I saw Eric Stewart buying drinks. Uh, Dan Green, who played in Yu-Gi-Oh!, uh, order his drink right next to me and I was eating a burger 
And he goes, is that burger any good? I said, yeah, it's going to keep me full for about two days. And he laughed. He said, that's a good sign. I said, yes, it is. And I thought that was funny. But a lot of those uh, people were just hanging out in the lobby. You know, Jimmy Hart, the wrestler, was hanging out in the lobby drinking. You know, Eric Stewart and everything. Dan Green, I think a comic book artist, was sitting at the bar right across from me. So, and then went to my hotel for the night. I had to take my medicine, and I couldn't find a vending machine to save my life, which you'll see in the video, the vlog. And uh, when I get it posted late tonight or early tomorrow. I couldn't find a vending machine to save my life. So I had to go back down to the bar about 9.30. And he's like, hey, do you have, can I take, I have a cup of Pepsi so I can take my medicine? He's like, yeah, yeah, on the house and everything. So very cool. So I went to bed about 10 o'clock. I woke up about 7. The NBC Suite but has an awesome buffet. You know, most hotels you got cereal and stuff like that. But they actually have full-on hot foods like bacon, hash browns, uh, scrambled eggs, baked potatoes. You can even have an omelet, a fresh omelet made, which that's very cool. Uh, so it's kind of like, you know, you go to Shoney's and get a buffet and you get an omelet. Same thing with, you know, Grand Country and a brand. And I thought that was very cool. But, hanging out in my hotel room, I got, um, got picked up about 9 o'clock, 9.30ish. And I've been home for about an hour and the snowstorm's probably going to hit pretty soon. But, like I said, these are pretty much the only autographs, these are the only autographs I got, you know. Courage to Kelly Dog and Yakko. So, very cool. Like I said, very nice people. And I did, I, just, I did buy some fixture frames on the way home, and I got a lot of other cool stuff. I just hit my microphone. Like, I bought this last second. I bought a Rhea's Grimmery picture, which I already should have enough Rhea's Grimmery shit to be freaking begin with to save my life. And then I bought this pillow because I was looking, I was walking around, I'm like, you know, I want the pillow. I bought this Hatsune Mika pillow, I think. I don't know if that's her on the other side or if that's another vocal artist named Luca, but I bought this uh, Hatsune Miku pillow because I have a couple places, but I don't have a Miku pillow, which I thought that was cool. Um, I did buy this cup. I did buy uh, High School DXC Okino cup, and the guy's like, yeah, if you want something more um, uh, provocative, we got some Nick uh, ones with, you know, boobs hanging out in the back. I said, you know, I just want something that I can wear, take to work for He said, no, I got you. So I got an Okino cup, and from the same exact booth, that was selling this cup, I ended up buying, once again, like I already have enough crap of her, a Rhea's Grimmery pillow. Now, they had these pillows last year, and I couldn't find anything in my interest, but this was hanging on display, and I'm like, oh, I want this. So I walked around and said, yeah, is that Rhea's Grimmery pillow for selling how much? I said, yeah, that's the very last one. If you want 20 bucks, I said, that's perfect. So I got that. And the one last more, one more thing, I did buy this Northwest Arkansas Comic Con shirt. And on the back, if I can get to the back, it says straight out of Comic Con. Maybe if you can say straight out of Comic Con. And that was about a $20, $20 shirt. So I got some good stuff. And for the autograph and picture from Rob Paulson and Marty Grabstein combined, was only about $130 all together. So I spent $130 on both of them. Um, got a bunch of knickknacks and everything. You know, each thing was about $25, 30 bucks, But, you know, it was very cool. So other than that, that was another successful Comic-Con. I am ready to go to the Missouri Comic-Con in a couple of weeks. Hopefully hours will get picked up back at work soon because I definitely going to need them because it's going to be a bigger Comic-Con and probably a little bit more expensive. So stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to get the vlog uploaded, edited and uploaded by either tomorrow night or I'll set it as a premiere tomorrow morning because I got to go to work tomorrow afternoon from 3 to close. But I will either post a video all together tonight before I go to bed, or I will set it as a premiere tomorrow morning. It just depends on what mood I am and how long it's going to take to edit. So stay tuned for the vlog. Hopefully it turned out great. I try to up record more of the trip, uh, going driving up there, and then hanging out and everything like that. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys a lot for watching. I'm out of breath. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Rate with a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe, check out my social media down below, and I will see you all in a future video. Take it easy.